quick disclaimer, this is not going to be a video about music theory. Uh, while it is super cool how chords work and like <laughs> notes go up or down an octave based on how you can double the frequency, this video is more about the like hundreds of mathematicians who've dedicated their lives to the techniques that make it so you can make a drum like 2% louder. <laughs> Right, we're going to get a little bit into the weeds immediately and talk about how speakers work. You probably remember from school that your eardrum is like this thin membrane and when vibrations hit it, then it vibrates and your brain's able to interpret that as different sounds. And like a low frequency vibration is a low sound and a high frequency vibration is like a higher pitch sound. But a speaker is basically just a reverse eardrum. It's also like a thin membrane and you run electricity through a magnetic coil which causes the speaker to vibrate. Instead of being a membrane that receives vibrations, a speaker is a membrane and it vibrates to create sound. And the reason I want to talk about how speakers work is because I'm going to talk about how audio is stored on your computer. Uncompressed audio is stored as a .wav file, or .wav file, I don't know exactly, but .wav file. <laughs> and this file is just a long list of numbers, and each number is associated to a certain time in like a song. What the number means is it's where the speaker should physically be <laughs> in its vibration at that point in time. So if you imagine a speaker vibrating and like over here is negative one and over here is positive one, and as your computer goes through this .wav file to play the song <laughs> with all the oscillations, your speaker is like trying its best to match up to the numbers that are in the song file, which is just mind blowing to me. <laughs> That's how it works. Lots of effects in music production involve cutting out the high end or low end of frequencies, um, which produce different effects. Like if you get rid of all the high end frequencies, it kind of removes all the scratching and the, and the like identity of the noise and just becomes more of a rumble. It sounds like you're underwater, really. Um, and then you can do the opposite by removing the low end frequencies and just get the scratches and like lose all the depth. But the issue is when your song is just this long list of numbers of where the speaker should be, you can't actually tell what the frequencies are. And frequency is kind of like a hard idea to think of when you're still in like this world of displacement and things about like pushing air molecules. And so this is probably my, one of my favorite things in all of math. When I was in high school, uh, I was taking this class called Differential Equations and my dad had to drive me 45 minutes to community college every day so I could go and take this math class. I guess two times a week. Our professor was Greek and he had this heavy Greek accent. Nobody in the class could understand each other because everyone came from like a different, a different place. Everyone's accents were too heavy, so half the class was just people saying what, but the other half we did get to learn about differential equations. Differential equations is all about like, it's like more calculus. It's all about kind of smooth flowing things, um, like heat dissipating or water flowing, air pressure. I took a class where I learned how shock waves work, which was really cool. Anyway, these differential equations are just like insanely hard to solve a lot of the time. And one of the techniques to solve them is called the Laplace transform, which turns time into frequency. And I remember I loved the Laplace transform because it was my first fancy math symbol. And one time my professor got kind of mad at me. He's like, is everybody in class paying attention? Because he saw that I wasn't really taking notes. I had like three pages of just me practicing drawing the fancy L. <laughs> but on top of that, it's just like a really cool math thing. And it was like, I was kind of learning like, you have to learn this whole new calculus. There's like this whole crazy insane chart of all the things you have to memorize, so like what turns into what. Uh, and there's like the formula for it is this just absolutely insane integral. Whatever, that doesn't matter. <laughs> the Laplace transform has a very specific version where you do this substitution, which I'll put here because I don't remember it exactly, but it's not hard. It's like S equals I omega or something. And what that gives you is the Fourier transform. And the Fourier transform is able to decompose a signal into all of its uh, frequencies. So when you do the Fourier transform on a sound wave, it breaks it down into all the like component sine waves that you have to add together to create the sound. Also, another super fun fact is the way your computer does it is there's an algorithm called FFT, which is fast Fourier transform, because the normal Fourier transform takes a while because it's like this terrible integral. <laughs> If you're trying to look at the frequency of like a song, you need to be doing Fourier transforms all the time. All right, the fast Fourier transform was invented half by like a random mathematician and half by a guy who was working at IBM. And I'll put the two names up there. Um, and they were like trying to patent it 
for IBM, which would have been so terrible for the world because it's like a big part of signal processing in general. You know, internet comes over radio waves and all sorts of waves. Like, the internet just might not work if, if this had been patented by IBM. Okay, here we can see our little EQ tool. Uh, and this is the FFT, Fast Fourier Transform I was talking about, where on the x-axis is our different frequencies, different hertz, and our y-axis is the volume that each of those frequencies is resonating at. Um, but yeah, and like when I'm talking, you can see it spikes in all the different frequencies that I talk in. Low, high, low, high. You can see the different, like, different frequency patterns. And the whole point of this EQ tool is to boost or decrease different frequencies for when people do like a vocal take. Um, and so you can hear, like if I remove all the lower frequencies, it'll sound like all the depth has been removed from my voice and it's like kind of tinny and hollow. Versus if I remove all the high frequencies, it'll sound like I'm kind of underwater. Um, and you know, you can boost or decrease different frequencies in the area. And there's all sorts of different effects you can get from it. But it is, literally, it's doing this Fourier transform and then showing you the graph of it in real time. And then you adjust this curve, which will like multiply the curve by the Fourier transform. And then it'll do an inverse Fourier transform and put that back in your audio file. And that's how the whole tool works. Uh, I put some Wikipedia links in the description so that you can check out more stuff if you're interested. And I hope that you found something interesting in this video. And thank you for watching.